Iron sucrate is a homogenized or re-aggregated sort of form of iron oxide. They take iron oxide, the dust from it, or they grind it down, and they re-aggregate it with usually a molasses of some sort, and they call it iron sucrate. There's been no, it, so it's iron oxide, and there's no li literature that's showing iron sucrate is actually going to result in a turf grass response. And in some cases where that, those lit that research was conducted by myself in, in Florida, usually on Bermuda grass or San Augustine grass, and we don't ever see anything from iron sucrate. Um, the iron chelate, it says iron EDTA. So iron EDTA at 0.25% applied at this labeled rate is probably going to do nothing at all. You have to get the granular form of iron chelate up very, very high to see a response, like north of 20 or 30 pounds per acre. Very high, almost a pound per thousand square feet of the iron chelate, iron from iron chelate, to see a turf grass response to a granular applied iron EDTA. But it's possible. So the iron EDTA is possible on soils with pH less than seven. On soils pH greater than seven, the iron EDTA is just as useless as iron sulfate. So what I'm getting at is there is some valuable sources of iron in this particular bag. Iron EDTA is possibly valuable. Uh, it's unlikely that you're going to see a response at this rate. It's just like taking Tylenol where two Tylenol will cure your headache. But the rate, if you lower the dosage down to one one hundredth of a, of a tablet, you're not going to see anything happen to your headache from Tylenol. It's the same thing with the, any of these iron micronutrients, any nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, any, any nutrient. You have to get the rate or the dosage up high enough to see a response. And the iron in this particular product is going to very, very likely do absolutely nothing whatsoever, simply because the rate isn't going to be high enough.